Good morning, good afternoon, good evening traders, wherever you are in the world, I hope you are well and I hope you're enjoying your weekend. Pips of Persia here, coming to you with another weekly market outlook video, preparing you for the trading week of 8th of April 2019 to 12th of April 2019. And yes, I've changed the colour to my charts, just playing around with them and seeing what settings I like most. Now, before we get started, as usual, some disclaimers. These setups are purely for educational purposes and by no means require any action. Your capital is at risk, therefore never risk more than what you're willing to lose since past profits do not guarantee future results. Uh, from the pairs that I'll be analysing, please make sure to take notes, choose a few of them that you like and your analysis agrees with them. Keep an eye on them for the coming week and see how the market reacts to it. Uh, if your analysis disagrees with mine, please make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know. Uh, however, please make sure to stick to your own analysis. That's the best way for you guys to learn through your own analysis. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Let's have a look at the um, economic calendar for next week. We can see that when it comes to high impact news, practically there's nothing going on Monday and Tuesday and Friday. However, Wednesday and Thursday, we do have some very high impact news for pound over here. Some statements for euro, definitely something to keep an eye on over here. And another statement over here for euro. Again, definitely something to keep an eye, uh, eye on over here. And one of the more important, most important news for this week is this FOMC meetings for US dollar. So Monday and Tuesday, in my opinion, are going to be very kind of normal trading days. Nothing, nothing special going on. Uh, my, the, the market might be just a little bit slow. When it comes to Wednesday and Thursday, just make sure to keep an eye on Forex Factory to keep your trade safe against the news, okay? That's a very important thing to do. Um, if I was you as well, <clears throat> I would definitely go ahead and watch these statements live if I can because at the end of the day, these are the sort of statements that I want to be watching live to get an idea about how the, the traders will react to these type of news and get a more detailed understanding of how the economy works. <clears throat> um, let's go ahead and jump straight into the pairs. AUD CAD, Australian dollar versus the Canadian dollar. On the weekly time frame, although I can see a big wick rejection over here, I've got a dragonfly doji, almost a dragonfly doji. To me, that top wick is quite long for it to be a dragonfly doji. Um, but although I have a long lower wick, in reality, what I can see is a one, two, three pin formation regarding the wicks. Again, this was explained in the other videos as well. But it's as if the market did something like this, okay, on the lower time frames. Um, so with that sort of rejection, with this sort of one, two, three pin formation, I'm going to remain bearish on this pair, especially because on a daily time frame, the highest daily closure was tapped off, respected, and I got a shooting star formation over there. So on a lower time frame, when I look at it, I can assume one of the two things. One, the market would be on a free fall on a four hour time frame until we get to this previous reversal zone. Or the market might climb back up, give us another touch of the high point over here, then continue to the downside. Definitely something I'll be keeping an eye on. Australian dollar versus the Japanese yen. Um, what I can see on a lower time frame, on a four hour time frame, is we're getting closer and closer and closer to this previous reversal zone over there. Okay, where every single time the market came within this reversal zone, you can see the market reversed, 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 coming back for another potential reversal. On an hourly time frame, <clears throat> I can see that the market's creating a series of higher highs over here. And on MACD, is creating a series of lower lows. Very clear divergence in the market, okay? So I wouldn't be shocked if we get another push up to um, completely fulfill this previous reversal zone and then get a massive move down. However, I'm gonna go ahead and keep in mind that on an eight hour time frame, I have formed an evening star formation over here, okay? So when I look at it, I might actually be creating a potential left shoulder, head, and a right shoulder formation, something like this, okay? Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if the market drops down a little bit, comes back up to give us this right shoulder, and then continues to the downside, instead of um, going all the way up to retest that um, previous reversal zone. Definitely something to keep an eye on, uh, two different scenarios, either head and shoulder formation for a decline, or the market to push up once again. Uh, to tap off that previous reversal zone, but we can definitely write this down all the way to the um, lower reversal zone. 
uh, the market's been consolidating within that zone, but it's quite a large zone. So long as we have enough confirmations, we can go ahead and take trades within. Australian dollar versus the New Zealand dollar. Um, previous week's closure, this one, we can see that we've got a clear bullish engulfing candle. These two candles next to each other are very, very strong bullish momentum. Okay. And we finally broke above this trend line over here as well. Um, this trend line over here, one touch, second touch, third touch. And we finally ended up breaking above it. All I'm expecting to happen right now is for us to get a decline to retest the trend line and potentially this decline could stop around this reversal areas. Okay, at the, at the um, retest of this trend line, I'm going to go ahead and execute some buy positions on Australian dollar versus New Zealand dollar to the upside to that previous reversal zone and then potentially we can come into sell but we'll look at the larger scale sell uh, in the next week's video as of now i'm expecting a decline to retest the trend line and the continuation to the upside after that for australian dollar versus the new zealand dollar uh, australian dollar versus the us dollar again on an eight hour time frame one two three three pin formation evening star formation over there and this was formed at the third touch of the trend line. One, two, third. Third touch of the trend line right over here. Okay. Uh, I don't need to say much about this pair right now because we've gone our evening star formation. We've gone the three pin formation at the touch of that trend line. Okay. And that was also formed at this previous reversal zone over here. Okay. If you can see the market never managed to maintain the price above that. It just keeps rejecting it. Um, with that being said, I'm expecting a very nice decline uh, when the market opens. I'm expecting a decline for Australian dollar versus the US dollar all the way down to this is actually my neckline. It's not another uh, trend line that I've drawn. It's my neckline. I do genuinely believe that the head and shoulder could be satisfied. But as of now, I'm going to take some uh, more intraday scale trade to the downside for Australian dollar versus the US dollar. Um, oops, Canadian dollar versus the uh, Swiss franc. Now, with this pair, again, one touch, second touch, and we've actually broken above this trend line. This is an eight hour time frame. We formed a left shoulder, head, right shoulder, inverted head and shoulder formation. And by the looks of it, on at, when we um, were looking to break out of this trend line, we formed this um, bullish flag where we've already gotten the one to two to three to four the fifth move is pending in my eyes okay this is not a perfect elliott wave that's not what i'm looking for here what i'm looking for in this case is um only a, a wave pattern basically i'm only looking at the wave pattern from one to two to three to four to five for this market to then continue to the upside after that I normally like to get a one to two to three to four to five move within any sort of flags to then execute my trades after that. <clears throat> so if I can get a decline to the downside to fulfill this fifth move, tap off my fib level, okay, and create a more clear right shoulder, then I'm going to go ahead and execute some very nice buy positions for Canadian dollar versus the Swiss franc to the upside. Uh, looks like very, looks like a very good setup to me. Canadian dollar versus the Japanese yen. Uh, on a larger scale, this is on a four hour time frame, I've gotten, I've, I still have this left shoulder head, right shoulder formation is still not satisfied in my eyes. And what I can also see on an hourly time frame is a shorter scale head and shoulder formation. So I generally do expect this market to be again on a very nice decline, maybe give us a more clear break of this neckline and a retest of this neckline and then continue to the downside. Uh, something I'm keeping an eye on. Canadian dollar versus the Japanese yen and to go ahead for the trades. Um, just checking the higher time frames for candlestick formations. I can't see any clear indication of um, a bullish move. So I'm going to uh, remain bearish on this pair as well. We've tapped off this previous reversal zone as well. Um, this looks very good to me. Uh, two head and shoulder formations in one. Just expecting the market to have a very nice decline. Swiss franc versus the Japanese yen. Um, let me quickly check the high time frames as well. Okay. On a four hour time frame for CHF JPY, 
And uh, what I can see is this. We have this previous highest daily, is that daily closure if I'm not mistaken? That was a four hour closure. So I'm gonna bring this closure down to make it a daily closure. I can see that this highest daily closure over here was actually tapped off later as well. And we got a nice reaction. Okay, the market uh, the market hasn't managed to maintain the price above that. Even if I look at the four hour time frame as well, highest four hour closure, the market pushed up, came right back within, did a wick rejection over there, and it's looking to drop in my opinion, especially because we've gotten another left shoulder head, right shoulder formation over there as well. Now, I expect this market to drop right here, right now when the market opens, just be on a nice smooth free fall um, to satisfy this head and shoulder formation. However, I'm going to go ahead and keep this in mind that we can potentially push to the next daily closure over there, highest daily closure, which to be fair wouldn't even be there, it would be here, that would be the highest daily closure. Uh, we might be able to push to the next highest daily closure over there, and then for the market to fall, because I can see that this highest daily closure is actually lining up with one touch over there, that's a highest daily closure, don't let that... Um, uh, th that's not the daily closure basically the market just gapped and then came back within that's the highest daily closure over there we've tapped it off once twice we might get another push up to tap it off um, if that happens then i'll execute sales there and then however right now this head and shoulder formation looks a lot better to me for the decline euro versus the australian dollar on a weekly time frame one touch, second touch, looking to come for that third touch over there of the trend line. Okay, that's on a weekly time frame. On an eight hour time frame, I've closed as a shooting star over there, the last eight hour candle of the week. So I expect the bearish momentum to continue. Okay, I believe the market still has some room to drop. I genuinely want to see the market come down to retest this trend line again for the third time. That's a weekly trend line that we were looking at. Touch that trend line for the third time. Be somewhere around the 71% Fibonacci zone. Fib was drawn from down here to up there. And for the bullish move to start after that. However, if that's not the case, I'm just going to wait for a break and retest of this lower scale, of this smaller scale trend line rather. Okay? Just a break and retest of this trend line over here would also be very, very good for me to um, take my trades based on. Uh, however, general bullish sentiment on euro versus Australian dollar. Euro versus the Canadian dollar. On a daily time frame, I can see this reversal zone over here. Very clear reversal zone where I've touched it once over here. Uh, some A lot of wick rejections over here as well. Broke through it and came back for the retest and gave me my shooting star formation over there. Very, very... Um, very nice looking for a and potential decline for a potential sell. Um, that is more than enough for me to go ahead and take my trades based on. I would have a stop loss above those wicks over there. Might be a relatively large stop loss if you're trading on a lower uh, account size. What you can wait for is to see whether we might push back up just a little bit for you to get a little bit better entries and then to execute yourselves to the downside. Okay. Um, Although we have this daily uh, shooting star over there, I would like to wait for the Monday closure. Okay, if, if it means I might miss this whole trade, I don't mind. But for this specific pair, I would like to wait for the Monday closure, even Tuesday closure, for me to take some trades based on. Because at the end of the day, we do have some high impact news for you on Wednesday. Um, so I wouldn't mind waiting for the Monday or Tuesday closure to reanalyze this pair. Euro versus the New Zealand dollar. Um, on an eight hour time frame, we can see this on a four hour time frame as well, actually. Um, we have this left shoulder head, right shoulder formation. We also have this trend line that's been tapped off once, twice, three times. Market tried to break through it, couldn't, respected it for a fourth time. Then we finally broke through it. Okay. So based on that and based on this head and shoulder formation, this would be my neckline that I'll be working with. All I'm waiting for is a potential decline to tap off the neckline and for the continuation to the upside to start after that. Decline down to touch the neckline and, to the, and for the continuation to the upside to start after that for Euro versus New Zealand dollar. This wouldn't be a very kind of large, long-term uh, trade. I'm only going to be, my final take profits for this buy would be at that reversal zone over there. 
pound versus the Australian dollar. Uh, this is practically the same as the analysis that was shared in the previous video. Not Nothing has, has changed about this analysis. We still have this trend line coming down. One touch, second touch, third touch break. Waiting for the retest, waiting for the Fib level, for the continuation to the upside to start. So this is identical to the analysis shared in the um, last video. Um, last week, the market didn't come as low as we wanted to for the um, move to the upside to start. Perhaps this week would be the week that we get decline. Fib level retest of the trend line for the continuation to the upside. Pound versus the Canadian dollar is also very similar to the last week's video. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's exactly what we were waiting for, for pound versus Canadian dollar as well. Retest of the trend line, uh, fib level, that's what we were waiting for. So again, practically identical. I'm waiting for a tap off of the 71% Fibonacci, uh, some sort of a candlestick formation to go ahead and execute my buys to the upside over here. This would be my weekly high. That's my weekly high. Okay. Pound New Zealand dollar. Uh, last week, we executed some buy positions around there, if I'm not mistaken. That was a fib level, touch of a trend line, um, low of the channel, basically, if I want to say it that way. Right now, what I can see on a four-hour time frame is I have got a move to the downside impulsive and a choppy move in the opposite direction. That's a very clear flag formation for me, okay? Looking at the daily time frame... One of the main reversal points has been that high highest daily closure over there. So very high daily closure over there. The market didn't really tap it off after it broke through. It came back within. I'm expecting that highest daily closure to be tapped off yet again. Okay. For the decline to start there. What I can also see on a daily time frame is a trend line. One touch over there. Second touch over there. Awaiting a third touch. And I also have a Fibonacci from that high to this low. 71% Fibonacci lines up perfectly with that highest daily closure over there. And the trend line is around there as well. So I can, I can expect this market to come up, meet all of these three zones, and then decline. That looks very, very good to me. So I'll have the touch of a uh, touch of a trend line. I'll have previous reversal zone and I'll have a Fibonacci level. So long as I get some sort of a candlestick confirmation, 100% this will be a very, very nice sell. Pound versus the US dollar. On a four hour time frame, what I can see is a one touch, second touch, third touch of the trend line. It looks like we came for the fourth touch of the trend line, but we didn't close below. Okay, this trend line is still valid, it's still in action. Um, what I would like to see is a move to the upside. It's a nice move to the upside. Technicals are supporting it at the end of the day. We have a touch of the trend line. We have a, um, we have a clear Fibonacci level over there as well. Um, supported by technicals, the idea of a buy to the upside. Uh, however, as of yet, we don't really have a clear um, candlestick confirmation. On an eight hour time frame. I can consider that a hammer formation, but I would like the body to be smaller, to be honest with you. And the candle before that is a bearish engulfing candle. Um, so I would like the body of that to be smaller. Uh, I'm still going to remain bullish on pound US dollar unless I get a very kind of clear break to the downside and a retest. Then obviously I'll go um, bearish on this pair. Uh, but as of now, because of the fib level and trend line, I'm going to remain bullish on this pair. New Zealand dollar versus the Swiss franc. Very, very easy analysis. One touch, second touch, coming for the third touch of the trend line. And you can see I've started my trend line from the uh, first higher low, if that makes sense. One touch, second touch, coming for the third touch. Fibonacci, that move, waiting for the retracement of it. 61.8 lining up perfectly with, um, with that zone. I'm going to take some intraday buys to the top of this trend line over there. After that, I'll be going long for a longer term period of time to the minus 27 Fibonacci extension for New Zealand dollar versus a Swiss franc. Uh, US dollar versus a Swiss franc as well. Very similar story. One touch, second touch, third touch of the trend line. I want to see if I can potentially come down for a fourth touch of the trend line as well as a Fibonacci level being the 61.8. Okay. And potentially to take some buy positions after that we do have the bearish flag formation over here as well okay move choppy move in the opposite direction uh so what i want to uh, see is this flag to be satisfied for the market to continue to the downside 
tap off the fib level tap off the trend line for the continuation to the upside to start there that's not just the trend line either we're within this kind of triangle formation over there so um i am a little bit more confident in this buy to the upside just waiting for the market to break low first um that's kind of all the pairs i've been looking at for um this week i haven't really got any clear analysis for gold yet to be sharing it just now i will be um analyzing gold in a little bit more detail later uh, from a very kind of yeah from a structural point of view what i can see is this kind of whatever you want to call it inverted flag in a, in a, in a way or a bullish flag formation formed after a bearish move uh, so we might get a move to the upside um for gold however i need to analyze this in a little bit more detail i can't really see anything clear for gold just yet in terms of a um in terms of a more swing position um but i'll be analyzing that and i'll be sharing that on my telegram as well uh, that's all the pairs for this week that i'll be looking at however if my uh, attitude changes about any of them as said before i will be sending that on my telegram channel i'll leave the link in the description below or just search pips of persia on telegram and it'll come up um make sure to join the telegram channel make sure to um uh, to notify yourself if I'm looking at a certain trade. I will be sending updates on my Telegram. I will be forwarding analysis for other pairs on my Telegram as well. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the analysis, whether you agree or disagree. Leave a comment down below. It would be very nice to see you guys' uh, analysis on different pairs as well. And um, have an amazing week. Have an amazing trading week. Stick to your trading plan. Stick to your correct risk management. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll leave my social media links down below as well. And let's smash it. Let's catch some pips.